Hi there. I'm going to start my podcast thing too. Steve Kaufman here again, and um, I put up a, a video the other day, so I'm kind of in the mood, so I'm going to do another one here. I, I think sometimes I don't speak loud enough, so I'm going to try to speak a little louder. Uh, it's a sunny day here in Vancouver. It's a warm day. Uh, this morning I was on the ice with my son and grandson. We played hockey. Uh, Mark, of course, who played professional hockey for 10 years in Europe and Japan and played for Team Canada. He was taking us through a bunch of drills and I was trying to keep up to my grandson. Uh, I worked up a tremendous amount of sweat and then I've been working here this afternoon editing my blog book. Uh, I've also been trying to start a blog in Russian because uh, there's a chance that I'll be running a regular blog in Russian about uh, the Winter Olympics here in Vancouver. It remains to be seen if I can pull it off. I'll obviously need some help to correct my Russian. So anyway, that's kept me busy and then I thought I would, uh, I would do a little video here and talk about what it is that I find annoying about some teachers. And it really hit home to me today because of two reasons. First of all, I, uh, because I subscribe to Google Alert, I get alerted when there are articles about language. So there was an article about uh, the uh, intensive summer language programs offered at UCLA. I will put a link to that on my blog, the Linguist on Language blog. And uh, so I read the article and it talks about their intensive summer program, but most of the article talks about, they see they have five days, four days they're in class and on the fifth day they go out and they have things like a scavenger hunt in Russian bookstores and they go to a Tchaikovsky concert or they do all this kind of thing. The other four days, as it's described in the article, is spent on the things they have to do like grammar and pronunciation and so forth. And I thought to myself, you know, if I, as a university student, am taking a course in Russian, I don't want to be organized into a scavenger hunt. If I want to go to a Russian bookstore, I'll go there on my own. I don't need to go uh, with a group. Uh, I, and besides which, I, I want to go when I want to go, not because the teacher decided on Friday that we should all go and have a scavenger hunt. But in the meantime, the courses they describe as being grammar and pronunciation, in other words, pretty traditional stuff. Um, I came across this before. There was an ESL program. I was talking to someone at Carleton University in Ottawa, and they had the students doing uh, slideshows. And I mean, it was all Koreans doing it, probably speaking Korean to each other. There were about 10 words of English used, and they all had a lot of fun pasting stuff into a slideshow using the new technology, using blogs, and I don't know what else. I mean, I would never want to do that. If they tried to organize me into joining up and pasting and scavenging, I mean, I, like, forget it. Uh, you know, even when I was at university, I mean, you must be joking. I'm here to learn the language. Uh, let's do something interesting. Let's listen, let's read, let's talk, let's do something with the language. Uh, and I find there's a lot of this kind of activity. I remember when I was a little kid, I still remember I was in grade four and uh, we had art class. So of course we were actually allowed to draw what we wanted. So I drew a hockey player. What else am I going to draw? So we had a teacher who was from Germany or somewhere. She didn't realize that hockey players wear short pants. So she came up to me and she said, no, no, no. And she, where I had drawn a hockey player with short pants and then hockey saw, you know, shin pads and whatnot. She drew it like ski pants, like straight line, because that's how you're supposed to draw pants. Well, if I want to draw a hockey guy with short pants, <laughs> let me draw my hockey guy. I still remember it. I remember too once when uh, my son, uh, who is now a professor of political science at the University of London, Mark's older brother, he had an assignment and he was asked to compare this was maybe he was 11 or 12 he was asked to do a, a project a, an essay you know comparing russia to china he did a phenomenal job what he had to say made a lot of sense he had identified the differences resources in one country uh, industry you know the development of industry in the other he had maps he had pictures and he got three out of 25. i mean he put so much work into that thing it was tremendous very mature Teacher said, you didn't ask, answer the specific question that I gave you. 
Like, who cares? Maybe your question was stupid to begin with. The fact is that the student spent a lot of time researching, put a lot of work, and wrote a very good paper. Okay, knock him down three points out of 25 because he didn't answer your question. So I always find this teachers, they either treat the students like children or they want to tell them what to do. And I find that most often they get in the way. Uh, rather than standing behind the student, encouraging them, finding out what it is they're interested in, perhaps trying this, trying that, seeing what can turn their crank. And of course, the other thing is this whole issue with this listserv where I had said, some teacher, and most of these people, I have to say, these English teachers are either extremely uh, pretentious in the way they write, or they make no sense whatsoever, or, and, and they're quite ignorant. And that's what I find. I'm just appalled at the quality of people they have on this list, sir. I, I, I just can't believe it. At any rate, someone began by saying, you know, the Japanese have a more teamwork approach uh, because of the American occupation, which is a completely stupid thing to say. I mean, forget about Confucianist influence from China, forget about their own traditions. Uh, five years of American occupation, that's created their sense of teamwork. So I said, no, that's not the case. And then they've been all coming back. They never admit they're wrong. And uh, someone else was saying that, uh, you know, the Japanese are all this top down. And I, and I use the word that, that the activity of the ins, this, this sort of insubordination by what I called hot-headed Japanese officers uh, precipitated to help precipitate the Second World War. Now, I wasn't there, but that's what I have read. So this person said, no, you can't put that because hot-headed is, is, you know, we can't have that. Uh, it might offend people of Japanese ancestry. So I went back to her and I said, first of all, this is not controversial. I could say this in Japan and it would not be controversial. Second of all, you're talking about people of Japanese ancestry in the United States. Those people are American. They don't care what I call Japanese officers in the Second World War in Japan. And she came back to me and she said, well, you know, uh, we have to be very considerate and we can't use words that might be considered inconsiderate. And this could offend, again, she went, could offend people uh, who may not, and she said, may not like their officers being called hot-headed. Like, who's their officers? These are Japanese Americans. Americans of Japanese ancestry who might be teaching English and who are on your list, sir, are going to be offended because I called a Japanese officer hot-headed. Uh, I mean, Eisenhower, Nimitz, Schwarzkopf, those are all American uh, officers with German names. Would they be offended? Or other Americans of German ancestry, if I said that the... SS officers were not nice guys. Would they be offended? I don't think so. But what bugs me most of all is she went on and on about how, you know, you must understand that, you know, uh, my job here is to sit here and make sure that uh, we all treat each other with respect and blah, blah, blah. What do you mean? These are adults. If adult teachers cannot get on a listserv and cannot be allowed to talk to each other, uh, discussing things of importance, like, like, why do they need a mother hen sitting over to make sure that they are all considerate to each other? A, perhaps that's why there are only clueless people on the list, sir, because anybody serious is not going to put up with this. Uh, anyway, so, you know, I think if you're going to be a teacher, don't look down at people. Don't teach them how to think. Don't help them to become, to, uh, as one person put it, I help them to maturely discuss ethical questions. Don't help them to be mature. They're probably more mature than you are, uh, judging by the way you write on this list, sir. So uh, yeah, I'm a little bit annoyed. Uh, these are the kinds of activities that are funded, always funded, you know, every little, little plot they can scheme to get some money to do something silly where we treat everybody like little children. They get money for, they run it for a while, it doesn't really help anyone, then the money runs out and the thing is over. So yeah, I think there is horrendous waste in our public education system. And uh, at that, I'm going to have to leave. And I might get back to that subject later on. They certainly don't pay any attention to what we're doing. But hey, such is life. Bye for now.